so I went to sit down and when I did that it flipped me around <laughs> kind of funny so I'm sitting here trying to catch on and I'm like oh my god the video is gonna start and I'm gonna be all discombobulated and funky <laughs> that's kind of funny <laughs> sorry guys hey guys my name is Nicola Dickens this is pretty much here welcome to my channel welcome back to my channel sorry I just almost bit it hard <laughs> so bad so I'm sitting here doing my thing getting things ready so I have to get up and I have to push the button and do all of that wonderful stuff when I came back in to sit down and you only have four seconds so if you're over by there you have to get back to this side of the the camera very very quickly because you only have four seconds so in doing that I'm like running around the table I went to sit down and I'm like I almost ate it it was funny it was seriously funny oh my god let me get my comments up sorry guys that was too funny i would have laughed my ass if it would have been freaking hilarious if i would have uh come back and uh yeah i was on the ground that would have been so funny oklahoma hey michael smith how you doing this morning okay so i have a great show for you today i have a new i have a couple things for you guys today amazing so today we are going to be reviewing miss usa shatter by um venom extracts we got this at metro meds look at this stuff look at this stuff look at this beautiful beautiful stuff i absolutely love it it's amazing so we're going to open this up we're going to check this stuff out and we're going to go from there what a good morning oh my god that was so funny i'm sorry that was just funny so look at this beautifulness oh yeah we are talking we are talking this is going to be a good day. So I'm a little bit late. Sorry about that. I was I was actually having fun playing on the intertubes of YouTube today. And oh my goodness, there's some real shit out there. I mean, wow, there's some real shit out there. <laughs> I'm like, I have got to stop watching YouTube. <laughs> kind of funny, but yeah. I guess I'm going to have to stop watching YouTube. But it's funny. I, I, you know, you gotta love some of this stuff. It is actually hilarious. Oh my god, I forgot my fire. See, I know. You try to do stuff. What? Now, now, Raffy's over here barking at me. Give me just a second. I gotta find the fire. It's a good thing I don't have far to go. So let's heat this up and let's see what she's like. So, Miss USA is a 75-25 indica hybrid, I believe, yes. So, and this is from Venom Extracts, of course. I have had my last two weeks of Venom. It has been an amazing adventure. We've been doing all kinds of stuff with the dogs. It has really been fun. So, I really love the, enum, the Venom stuff. Doesn't it look gorgeous? I'm going to have to take some serious pictures of this stuff because it looks amazing. It is really pretty, really golden, just absolutely lovely, um, and super, super stable. So it's not real sticky, it's not really yucky, it, it's really stable, it's really secure. I can pick it up, I can play with it, I can shatter it, I can do all kinds of things with this stuff. Venom definitely has their process down a little bit better now than what they did a couple years ago, but they are really kicking ass, I'll tell you what. I love it. So guys, don't forget to hit that thumbs up button if you like what you see on today's video. Also, don't forget to hit that subscribe button to join the Weedies family here on YouTube. I have been late this week, but normally I'm here from 9 a.m. to 10 a.m. Monday through Friday, I spend my weekends with my family. So I'm sorry about that, but I gotta have family time too. <sighs> I'm gonna let that cool down just a, a skosh. You know, you have to ask yourself, what is a skosh or a pinch? You know, when you're when you're reading those recipes and you see that whole of skosh or a pinch of something, how much exactly is that? I hate when I find that in recipes, but I do get it in some recipes. So, uh, I have my warm apple cider here. With the question of the day, what the hell am I doing out of bed? So, uh, I kind of wanted to start this show today with a big thank you to all of you guys. You guys have really no idea how much you do for me on a daily basis. So I'm going to tell you. <laughs> so let's do this and let's get into it. As always, fuck cancer, fuck depression, fuck anxiety. In with the good and out with the bad.
the wind out of you I mean immediately I can feel this one immediately like right between the eyes um, Uh, Venom extracts. This is a 75-25 indica hybrid. It comes from strawberry, but uh, strawberry banana and kosher dog. Um, obviously, we are still on venom extracts, um, and this particular strain has about a 27% THC level, so it's a really serious uh, THC level there. Um, it has kind of a uh, a, bower, a very flowery herbal type of a taste to it. The high is, ama is as amazing as the flavor with a super potent cerebral effect that is often accompanied by hazy psychedelic visions that quickly lead you into, a, into falling asleep. Well, I can honestly say I've done at least one dab of this before now and I have not had any hallucinations. So if anybody gets hallucinations with this, please write in the comments below. Um, I have never had any type of a hallucination on cannabis. I have had a uh, hallucinations on big pharma medicines, but I've never had it on um, cannabis, which I think is is much better. When you're in the middle of these hallucinations, hallucin hallucinations, they really suck. Um, the one hallucination that I do actually remember, I actually had to get up out of bed and go grab my son because what I saw it was like a wall of spiders. It was like a curtain wall of spiders crawling, and I have serious arachnophobia. And it freaked me out and it wasn't there it wasn't real it was a hallucination but it is something that did happen and this was on a medication that was prescribed by a doctor not by cannabis so I didn't like it it was pretty pretty trippy um, but it, it is what it is so the effects of this are body high cerebral euphoria relaxing and sleepy medicinally to treat depression insomnia migraines mood swings and stress so this is a Good full bodied effect indica, which is beautiful. Gotta love that. Let's go ahead and pull this off a little more. Can I do it? Can I it back? Okay. Let's pull this off a little more and do a little more of this. So, how is everybody's day going? So, do you guys have that same problem? Do you guys like get on YouTube and get stuck in all of the stuff in all those tubes? There is so much content on YouTube. That I swear I could do nothing but watch YouTube 24-7 for a couple of days and never run out of new things to watch. It is insane. There is so much content on this platform for YouTube. It is crazy. A lot, you know, most of the content's really good, very educational. There's a lot of it though that is so drama that it's just as it's no. You know, I don't mind watching the drama. Not involved in the drama is great, but wow, there's been so much drama on YouTube that I am very happy to stay out of. But <laughs> it's definitely been interesting. A few of these people really need to start smoking. Let me tell you. So as always, guys, don't forget to like this button, uh, like this video. Don't forget to subscribe and join the the Wee family here on YouTube. I know I'm like repeating myself. I'm like I have to read, and I'm gonna sound like an idiot. So, uh, we have noticed that the more I smoke, the worse of a reader I become. So, we do have another article today. We're going to go over a little bit more of the history behind cannabis, which is a lot. We're going to do a brief history of cannabis. We are still in our National Geographic magazine. Of course, um, I love this. I love being able to get all of this factual information online or in magazines lately. I mean, with marijuana going legal in different states there is so much good information that is coming out of a lot of this that 
I can't not read it. It is so worth all of our time to sit down and hear some of these some of these art articles, some of these stories, some of these accounts. That that's why I decided to do that over the next couple of days. But I was going to tell you, and now that I'm going to do a dab, we're going to let this thing cool off. We're going to reheat it. But I was going to tell you, and I totally forgot what I am most thankful for and how each and every one of you guys help me on an, on a daily basis. Um, I currently don't really work at this point in time. The only thing that I do is this in my writing for Big World Magazine. So that's really all I do. So if it were a, if a few days went by that I wasn't really doing anything, taking a shower wasn't a huge deal for me. Um, putting makeup on every day, I'm like, I don't know why, why? Um, since I've started this channel, I've started on a routine. And that has helped me more than it has helped anything in the world. And for that, I thank you guys. I won't go on camera pretty much anymore without doing something to myself or making myself feel better or making myself feel like worth going on my, my channel for this. So you guys have been that strength for me. I get up every single morning with the idea that, except on weekends, of course, with the idea that, hey, what I'm going to do today is I'm going to make these videos, I'm going to do this thing, I'm going to be that advocate, I'm going to talk as much as I can. Whether people actually listen to me or not, that's fine and dandy, but it is something that we all have to struggle with. So that's what I've struggled with, um, that whole oomph at getting up and getting dressed and getting ready every single day and doing that thing every single day. So that for you guys, I want to thank you. You have given that to me. Um, because, I mean... I was out of work for a year before um, I started this channel, and it was a, it was a tough thing to get up every day and figure out what I'm going to do, especially if because I, all I really did most of the time was clean the house, and I didn't want to get up and take a shower and put my makeup on to clean the house to get dirty again. So it was it was really that thing for me. It was kind of that thing that helped push me to get me out of bed in the morning. It helped push me to to help take care of myself a little bit better. It helped push me to take care of those things on a daily basis that I need to take care of for myself. Not for the family, not for everything else, but for myself, to getting myself out of bed and giving myself something to do. Instead of sitting down and watching nothing but YouTube all the freaking time and going stupid in the brain, um, or TV or whatever, I have been, you know, I took this opportunity to make this channel to to give my life some type of purpose other than just sitting around doing nothing. And that's really what this has given me. And so for that, I want to thank each and every one of you. You have given that to me. And it, it has been a, a wonderful gift that I don't know if I can ever fully thank you guys for, because um, you guys have no idea how hard it is to get up and get moving every single day when you have no place to go. Um, it's really hard. Um, it's really hard when your kids are already moved out, so I don't have them to take care of anymore. So it's, it's hard. I have the animals, but the animals don't care whether or not I've showered every day. So, I mean, there's this whole thing. So now I garden. Now I do all of these other things, all of which I started after my YouTube channel. So for that, guys, I want to thank you. You guys have given me that purpose in life to get up every morning, to get dressed, to get um, going, to get all of this stuff, you know, moving around to, to staying motivated for myself so for that i want to thank you guys you have really really helped me out over the last couple of years um just by by being around and saying hi to me on a daily basis so thank you thank you guys for that um this is the, the start of my thankful dabs for november and of course always i'm most thankful for you guys because you guys have really i i couldn't tell you how much you guys have helped me so thank you guys. I appreciate that. So let's heat up this bagel. Let's do this. Let's get over the, uh, the, 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 the emotional part of this review. Um, so there it is. Yeah, it's hard to stay motivated. It really, it gets hard. Um, I don't know. I'm gonna sneeze. This is one of those strains that for some reason, whenever you smoke it, it like tickles your allergies. And I don't know what it is, but it does. It tickles my allergies almost every time I smoke it. Ugh. So, and I have had, the, I have reviewed this strain um, from multiple breeders um, in the past and every one of them had made me kind of sneezy. So it's kind of funny. I'm not sure what it is about this particular strain that's more of an allergen than not, but it is. 
I know it is. I just keep saying this is beautiful shot. It is. It it is absolutely beautiful, beautiful shatter. Um, that color is so bold. It is so golden. It is just absolutely beautiful. I'll take some pictures of it and put it on my Instagram because it is really, really pretty. So as always, guys, fuck cancer, fuck depression, fuck anxiety. I'm like, what else? But in with the good and out with the bad. Let's talk about a brief history of cannabis. Cannabis is one of the world's most cultivated plants, showing up everywhere, from ancient Chinese burial sites to religious ceremonies in Europe. How did cannabis spread around the world and then suddenly become banned? So that's what we're going to talk about. Look at those beautiful plants. <coughs> I agree. How could it go so strong and then, boom, you're done. Marijuana throughout history. Uses, uses, abuses, and prohibitions. <coughs> no way. Mm. Cannabis may seem to be a suddenly hot topic these days, but the trust is people have been using it for thousands of years. Um, Chinese textiles from 4000 BCE confirmed that cannabis was being used to create cloth some 6,000 years ago. Records also show that cannabis gains, or grains were once considered a crucial food source in ancient China. As a wild plant native to Asia, cannabis was likely discovered by early humans in the same way as any other plant that came to be cultivated. Through ancient and experimentation, um, cannabis was, oh, this might help. I know, I'm like, why oh, can't, why are these like not so working so well? Cannabis was probably first used to make rope, clothing, and food. It didn't take long, however, for early humans to discover the plant's psychoactive properties and uses as medicine and spiritual, any spiritual enhancer. From a source of food and cloth to psychoactive substances. Archaeological evidence includes a cup for smoking and charred hemp seeds, strongly suggests that it was used for religious or medical purposes around 5,000 years ago in what is now Romania. Even earlier, archaeological evidence from Japan suggests it well have been used around 10,000 years ago. A Chinese text compiled around the year 100 BCE contains passages supposedly originally written around 2700 BCE that describes the hallucinogenic effects of marijuana. Even in ancient times, some cautioned against consuming too much cannabis. One Chinese text noted that overuse could cause users to see devils. Ancient Persians believed that cannabis over, overuse would result in reproductive problems and weaken the heart. Ancient medicinal and industrial use of cannabis was common. According to Greek, Greek historian Herodotus, hemp was used to make clothing and, and near what was modern day Bulgaria around 450 BCE. Pa Tu, a pioneering surgeon in China, is famous for creating what may have been the world's first anesthetic which he concocted from cannabis and help and alcohol around year 200. By the beginning of the common era, cannabis was well known and used everywhere from Asia to Europe, making it one of the world's most valuable crops in the ancient world. Yet because it was native to Asia and then spread to Europe, cannabis would not arrive in the Americas until the era of Spanish, Spanish colonization. Cannabis in a New World Cannabis first arrived in the Western Hemisphere in 1545, when the Spanish brought it from Europe to Chile. A different plant, Apocrinum, Cannabinum, sometimes called Indian hemp, is native to Americas, but contains no THC. 
the principal psychoactive ingredient in cannabis. It was used by Native Americans to make rope and cloth and for medical purposes unrelated to cannabis. Yet, despite the presence of a native substitute, cannabis sativa was most commonly planted by Spanish and American colonists. In pre-industrial America, there was great need for rope, sails, clothing, and other hemp-based products. In 1619, King James I issued a royal decree requiring every Jamestown property owner to grow 100 hemp plants. Could you believe that? You have to grow. <laughs> um, hemp plants for export, largely to provide rope for the British Navy. When Na Napoleon's troops um, conquered Egypt in, 19, er, in 1798 and found that Islamic country did not produce alcohol, they transitioned to local substitute, smoking hashish or drinking a cannabis infused liquid. It, its use at the time was apparently so widespread that one French army officer wrote that the mass of Egypt's male population is in a perpetual state of stupor. Fearing these same effects on their troops, the French army had banned cannabis in all forms by October of the 1800s. Despite the popularity of hemp as an agricultural crop in the 17th and 18th centuries, medicinal uses were not marketed or used in the United States until Irish, Irish physician William, William Brooke O'Shaughnessy pioneered research after learning of the plant's medicinal, medicinal uses in India. In the mid to late 1800s, cannabis began to be incorporated into various medicines and dubious quali uh, qualities in addition in, in addition to proliferating recreationally alongside opium. So that's the image that came with that one. Uh, in 1883, article of Harper's Monthly described a New York hashish den may be the earliest American description of a bad trip. The author, H. H. Kane, wrote, Suddenly the earth was rent apart and falling upon the edge of deep cavern, I saw far below me a molten, hissing sea of fire that the writer would openly discuss drug use in a major publication gives a sense of the permissive attitudes of the time. <laughs> well, what does that say about uh, the National Geographic now? <laughs> Sorry, I know that wasn't very nice, but um, his uh, negative experience, however, foreshadows the movement to ban marijuana in the coming decades. The movement towards prohibition. The modern movement to ban cannabis with, was gathering steam by the early 20th century. The 1906 Pure Food and Administration Drug Act required manufacturers of any product con that contained cannabis to list it as an active ingredient. While cannabis remained legal, this requirement increased awareness of its use. The 1912 International Opium Convention for the first time required import certificates for hemp which by the time also referred to as cannabis, able to produce a high. The French delegation argued from the medical point of view, there can be no doubt that hashish is very dangerous. Meanwhile, the 1919 prohibition of alcohol in the United States reflection of society that had begun to take the uh, perceived misuse of addictive substances extremely seriously Cocaine and opium were severely restricted around this time. In the United States, marijuana was effectively made illegal by the federal government in 1937. While some in the United States criticized marijuana use by trying to, to Mexican and by tying it to Mexican and African Americans, the global trend of drug restriction, including the binding international treaties mean that the prohibition of cannabis in the United States was probably uninvitable regardless of the international political dynamics. Okay. These attitudes coalesced 
and strengthened over the decades until 1961 when the United Nations Single Convention on Narcotic Drugs declared that the use of cannabis for other than medical and scientific purposes must be discontinued as soon as possible. In 1969, the Supreme Court overturned the 1937 ban on marijuana because of a constitutional technicality. Cannabis was once again made illegal at a federal level in 1970. Although recent awareness of uh, marijuana's value for medical purposes means medical marijuana is legal under state law in a majority of states as of 2018. Well, now as of 2019, a majority in the in the majority of states. Um, so around the world, cannabis is illegal for recreational purposes in nearly every country, but enforcement variety varies widely. Although there have been selected bans in societies throughout history, today's climate of near total prohibition worldwide is highly unusual from a historic perspective. Current trend suggests that the climate of prohibition is easing in favor of legalization of medical use and some recreational abilities, which I think is amazing. It is about time that it got that type of recognition. So let's do another dab. Um, and we are out of here for the day. So yes, medical marijuana has many, many different uses. It can be, you know, hemp especially has many, many uses. The major use we use about, or that we talk about, the, the major uses we talk about on this channel of hemp, excuse me, is inflammation, uh, respiratory, well, a little respiratory, not a lot, um, inflammation, anxiety, depression, things like of that nature. Really, inflammation for me works a lot. It does help with some of that, that anxiety and depression. Honestly, smoking cannabis helps me more with the anxiety and depression. Let's get us a dab out. As always, guys, fuck cancer, fuck depression, fuck anxiety. In with the good, out with the bad, as always. knock the wind out of me hit you right here and right here um it burns on the throat the throat really burns so i have a sensitive throat anyway um but you do have to watch out for that spiciness to the cannabis breathe kind of again oh, kind of so these dabs are kind of funny this one actually made me kind of warm so this one it hits you right in the throat and kind of right between the eyes and then it kind of makes you really warm all over kind of that same warm I don't know if you guys have ever had an MRI with that um, iodine in it kind of makes it does that kind of a feeling it's it's an odd feeling it does it's not painful it's not horrible it's just warming <coughs> so now that I can get my breath back it is much nicer um overall when i started this video out today i was at a pain level of about an eight 
uh, my pain level now is about a six. It's not extremely, extremely low, but it is better than what it was. Um, my anxiety level was probably only at about a six, and I wanna say maybe a three now. I really don't have too much anxiety. I'm actually thinking about going outside and watering the garden. But for those of you that know me that I have agoraphobia, that can take me a little bit of time because it does actually freak me out to go outside. It is one of those things that you just feel like you're getting an earthquake in your head and you gotta grab stuff for a minute and it kind of, it just kind of freaks you out and I don't know. But overall, it is better. So I am looking at going outside and watering the garden. So thank you guys for joining me today. As always, I hope you have a beautiful day. Mad love. And Tigger always hears me say goodbye. Come here. Come on. And has to jump up and say hi to you. He's like, since we're not on camera outside no right now. Why, why do you have drool all over your head? Did you drool on your little buddy? Did you drool on your little buddy? <laughs> Bye, guys. Mad love.